Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll try to build a micro Commodore 64, even smaller than the one currently in the market. In recent years we've been seeing the release of the mini Commodore 64, but I've been wondering, isn't it possible to make it even smaller? So I found on PCBWay a hardware and software project that allows you to emulate the Commodore 64. And with this emulator you can use both original Commodore 64 joysticks, but even modern gamepads thanks to the USB port. And it's an optimized version of the famous emulator Vice, but it's modified for the Raspberry Pi. But now let's open the boxes. Inside the package there should be PCBs, resistors, LEDs, a micro SD card, a Raspberry Pi and other components. So first I'll assemble the board and then I'll take care of the software installation. Of course there are multiple boards and I think there is a minimum of 5 PCBs for each order and I'll start by inserting the resistor and I believe its sole purpose is to limit the current that goes to this LED and then I'll insert the switches. I inserted the switches and I attached the other part of the PCB with two rubber bands so they don't come off when I solder them. I soldered the switches, the LED and the resistor. Now I'm going to insert the pin header that I'll need to connect the Raspberry Pi and also the serial port for the joysticks. I soldered all the components into the board and now I just need to connect the headers into the Raspberry Pi so I can connect it to the board. The board is already prepared, now let's move on to the installation of the software on the Raspberry Pi. It's all very simple and it's already explained on the website where you can find all the information about it. Just download the file from this link and copy the files to the SD card, insert the card into the Raspberry Pi and the installation is already done. Unfortunately, there are no games included, so I downloaded this game for the Commodore 64 which was recently released and I'll leave the link in the description. 
The soldering and installation parts are completed and now I just need to test it. I connected the HDMI cable with an adapter and at the end I'll connect the power supply. I can also connect an external keyboard. As for the micro SD card, it just needs to be larger than 4 megabytes. And now let's test it. And it works! This project actually is for the Raspberry Pi Zero, but also for the 2 and the 3. I also have a Raspberry Pi 3, so I'm going to test it with that too. And it works with that too. Before diving into one of the downloaded games though, I want to write a simple program in BASIC. And the keyboard works, but it's too small to program directly on it, so I'll connect an external keyboard. And this is possible with both Raspberry Pis, but with the Raspberry Pi Zero, I need to connect an external adapter. The power cable is the last one to be connected, so I've turned off the emulator and connected the keyboard via the USB port. And if I were using the Raspberry Pi Zero, I would have needed an adapter. As for the program, I want to write a very simple one just to test if it would work. So a ball bouncing at the edges of the screen seems like an excellent test. I begin the program with an instruction that allows me to draw graphical characters in the top left and top right corners of the screen and to clear the screen with an empty line and then to print single bouncing ball at the bottom of the screen. Now I also initialize some variables like sm, which will hold the memory address of the screen, and also x and epsilon, the coordinates of the ball, and of course I also need to know where the ball is moving, in which direction, so I'll initialize the x and the epsilon. I've initialized x to a random value between 0 and 23. Now, to ensure that the ball doesn't go off screen, I'll use two if statements, and when the ball hits one of the edges, it will bounce back in the opposite direction. Now I actually need to move the ball on the screen, changing the coordinates x and epsilon based on the current directions. Now I'll use the loop to slow down the movements of the ball, creating a realistic bouncing effect. And I conclude with the go to 30 instruction that allows the continued animation of the ball. And it works! Now let's do the most fun part, which is testing if the game works. To access the emulator menu, you just need to hold down the Commodore and F7 keys and then go to cartridges and here you can select all the downloaded games.
I've also tried other games and they all work. I'll leave the link to the project and the games that I've used in the description. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.